Joining me now is Ambassador Linda Thomas-Greenfield, the United States Ambassador to the UN. Um, you heard his remarks. It was a very tough speech. There is diplomacy going on behind the scenes with Secretary Blinken, but Israel's Prime Minister is accusing the UN of being anti-Semitic. What's your reaction? Uh, thank you, Andrew, and great to be on with you. Let me just say, we have raised concerns consistently of an unfair bias in the UN system uh, as it relates to Israel. We have, I think, an inordinate number of, of meetings related to Israel compared to other regions in the world that uh, where we have sometimes even more problems, like Sudan is, is an example. So I think the prime minister is right in the sense that there is an unfair uh, focus on Israel. I will not uh, comment on anti-Semitism. Uh, I, I have no doubt that there are individuals uh, in the UN system that uh, might, uh, or uh, among member states, that that might apply to. I would not apply it to the entire UN system. Netanyahu told uh, Tehran today, if you strike Israel, we will retaliate. Iran has not retaliated directly against Israel for the assassination of the Hamas leader in the Tehran, in, in Tehran, in the Iranian capital, or for attacks uh, against its proxies in Lebanon. Uh, how concerned are you about the threat today? The president, of course, has made clear that we do not want to see the situation in the Middle East uh, escalate. We don't want to see a full-blown war in, in the Middle East. So, yes, we are concerned about uh, the situation. We have just uh, urged uh, the Iranians, who have been proactively engaged with supporting uh, anti-Israel uh, elements, that they should cease those uh, those actions. But Israel has a right to self-defense, and we have been clear about Israel's right to defend itself should it be directly attacked by the Iranians. And uh, whether or not Secretary Blinken actually meets with Netanyahu, uh, who was supposed to be happening, it may not be happening now, but there are talks going on. Uh, do we know anything about this latest strike against Beirut? Because in the, the headquarters of Hezbollah, underground, which they were, they say, targeting with precision bombs, may have been more he uh, Hezbollah leaders. There's a question about whether Nasrallah, for instance, is there. Yeah, I'm aware of the attacks. I'm seeing the press reports as, as uh, you are. Uh, I don't have any additional information on what is coming out uh, from those attacks. There's a lot of talk about the U.S. proposal. They thought they had uh, implicit agreement from Israel before the prime minister got here. Then when he got here, he talked about continuing to fire. Um, I am told by U.S. officials that they have been told by Israelis that they believe that they have almost accomplished their military goals in Lebanon, that uh, they're not going to go in on the ground, in other words, uh, right now, at least as far as they're concerned, that they, you're getting at the command and control. They're trying to make it safe for those people to return to the north who have not been in their homes since October 8th. Uh, is that is it possible then, as these talks continue, that they might agree to a ceasefire or a pause in hostilities in the coming days? Look, Andrew, that is our hope. <laughs> that is what we have been consistently working on for almost a year and that is to get us to a cessation of hostilities that would allow for hostages uh, to be returned to their families, uh, assistance to be uh, provided directly to Palestinians in Gaza, for Israelis along the border with Lebanon to return to their homes uh, in safety, and for Lebanese who are living on that border to return safely. So those efforts continue as we speak, uh, and we continue to be hopeful that they will bear fruit. There's so much else that's been going on. Uh, the so-called speed dating by diplomats here. Iran has been here with their new government. Uh, we've heard what Israel said about the Iranian government in general today, but also a lot of other conversations, including about the humanitarian aid, aid efforts. There is a dispute between AID officials who say that Israel is blocking aid from getting into Gaza. 
and the decision by the Secretary of State that if that's not the case, because that would require cutting off weapons to Israel. Um, how do you assess whether Israel is blocking aid getting into Gaza? Look, we also have engaged with the Israelis, with others on the ground, to ensure that humanitarian aid gets through to the people of Gaza. This is the highest priority of the U.S. government. And as I've said to my colleagues on a regular basis here, we are the only country with diplomats on the ground working on this every single day. Uh, Israel does have a responsibility to ensure that humanitarian assistance is allowed in. And this is an issue that we raise with them on a regular basis. The UN uh, has a special uh, reconstruction and engagement representative who has been meeting with the Israelis on, on this issue on a regular basis. And we're meeting with others in the region to ensure that we can get the needed humanitarian assistance Thank on the ground to, to Palestinians.